And good morning from the great city of Atlanta, Georgia. I'm Charles Gibson. I'm Diane Sawyer, and it's Thursday, November 14th, 2002. We have come all the way from the Big Apple to the Big Peach. We are on the fourth stop of our five states in five days. And, of course, it's Atlanta, Georgia. It's part of the ABC News project, as we've been telling you, to travel to all 50 states. Just to tell you a little bit about what's in this half hour, we have got a terrific story. It was just a few months ago that Dr. Tim Johnson told us about a new device uh, that really can give some hope to three million people who badly stutter uh, in this country. And a young fella, a college student here in Georgia, saw the piece on Good Morning America, or some friends of his family saw it, called him, said, you got to get one of these. He did, and uh, Tim is going to talk to him about what it has done for him. This is not something that's been tested widely, but it seems to be effective, and Tim's going to tell us about it this half hour. Right. He didn't have to come to us. We came to him to hear what happened with him. In August, we had a story about a device called Speech Easy, which can be used to help some of the three million people in this country who have debilitating stuttering problems. It was developed by a bunch of researchers at East Carolina University, including a man named Dr. Joe Kalinowski, who is himself a stutterer. And after that aired, we were deluged with mail from people who wanted to know more, including uh, a letter from a family in Marietta, Georgia, that had a very personal interest in all of this. And Dr. Tim Johnson now brings us up to date on the device and that family. Mm -hmm. My name is Dr. Joe Kalinowski remembers his own childhood as a stutterer, the helplessness of being locked behind a wall of his own words, the endless taunting from other children. I prayed every night, take off my arm. Take off my arm, God. Because I know kids will tease me for not having an arm. But if I can talk the same as every other kid, that'll be okay. Dr. Kalinowski's story captivated Good Morning America's viewers, none more than Jan Babcock. We were inundated with phone calls from friends and family members that said, did you see Good Morning America? There was some guy on there that stuttered and they invented some kind of device and you've got to call him, you've got My to find out what it's off. about. More importantly, how did I get one for my son? 19-year-old Mark Babcock has stuttered since he was a toddler. A straight-A student, Mark scored near-perfect on his SATs and was elected homecoming king by his high school senior class. All this, even though he finds basic communication torturous. And I came home every day feeling tired and worn down and lonely. Mark has tried different therapies with increasing despair, including one where he had to use the telephone to call local hotels. The exercise was, uh, my name is Mark Babcock, uh, I'm stuttering, please be st patient. Do you have a pool? And Bob and I stood on the other side of the wall and heard our son crying and begging Tim, please don't make me do this. And it was, it was so painful and so uncomfortable for us. We wanted to run in and stop it and don't make it happen anymore. Oh, I can remember one of the things that people said to me on those phone calls. It was 12 years old, being cussed out and being made fun of, and just being called such horrible things. Mark and his family were almost afraid to be excited about the speech easy device they saw on Good Morning America. This speech easy device is like a miniature PA system. It has a microphone, an amplifier, and a speaker. It delivers delayed and altered voice feedback to the stutterer and somehow tricks the brain into thinking that another person is speaking too. Previous research has shown that speaking in unison, for example, reciting the Pledge of Allegiance in class or even singing with a choir, inhibits stuttering. It's a 
But Mark has tried everything. So three weeks ago, he went to East Carolina University to be fitted for this device, which has just arrived in the mail. With his family by his side, Mark hopes for a miracle. There you go. It's working. I always forget how to put it in. Well, it's not like you've had not a lot like of experience. Had it. Well, I've, I've had it on one time, and it worked, and I put it in easily. <laughs> and here I am, just talking away. And it's so easy, because I can hear myself in here. And, of course, all of you can't hear this, but I've got it in here. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh. <laughs> oh, son, you deserve this. I know I do. You I've worked so it. hard for this. This is so amazing. I don't even think I have it in right now. <laughs> One week later, we caught up with Mark to see how he was doing. And it's still hard to just accept that, wow, this is actually that good. I'm really impressed. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but I wondered what would happen if Mark took the device out. Is that something you would be willing to demonstrate? Yes, I will. Okay, let's try Check it. Check it out. See what happens. I... Can truthfully say I don't like to to be seen now with without uh, this in. Put it back in. Now, will it take you a few minutes now, even with that short period of it out, to adjust? I don't think so. It shouldn't. It, it, I guess it didn't. I guess, <laughs> there you go. I guess it didn't. for a demonstration. That's a good demonstration. <laughs> That is so amazing. And Tim Johnson is with us in Boston. Tim, so many questions. How many of them are there? Have they been thoroughly tested? What's the percentage of effectiveness? You take it. The first one was uh, Joel Kalinowski's a year and a half ago. Uh, about 85% of people who have come to be fitted in various places around the country will find it useful. That means about 10 to 15% do not. Of those who find it useful, they report a 50 to almost 100% in some cases improvement in fluency. It's obviously not a cure. It's more like eyeglasses for vision or hearing aids for hearing, uh, but it has proven to be of a tremendous help to a lot of people. Obviously, we're going to wait for long-term follow-up to find out for sure, but I think it's a truly exciting development for people who have suffered and found so many other approaches not helpful. All right, Tim Johnson, thanks very much. That is a wonderful story, and sometimes the simplest solutions are the most effective. Thanks very much, Tim Johnson.